All right, this is Dr. Roger Elmer, Advanced Neurospinal Solutions, video lecture. Today we're going to talk about multiple sclerosis directly. Now when we talk about multiple sclerosis, we have to talk about several different problems all together at once. Uh, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disorder. So if you want to, to refer to autoimmune, we already did a video on it. We can do more too and get more, more in depth on autoimmune itself, uh, but particularly multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disorder that is attacking the brain or, or the central nervous system in some way. That problem creates spasticities and all kinds of weaknesses and problems within the brain. Uh, and, and what it likes to do is it likes to go after the myelin sheaths. M multiple is many different obviously, and sclerosis is hardening. So there are hardenings within it. Uh, normally on an MRI or uh, MRI, you're gonna see uh, splotches you know, in different places, and those are the sclerotic places. Those are fibrotic areas. And, and normally when patients come in, they're, they're very distraught uh, over it, and, and, and I understand being distraught over, over your problem, your condition, but they're looking at the splotches and they're saying, oh no, look at all of this. I say, hey, don't worry about that. That's already healed, right? I worry about the ones I can't see. That's the ones I want to stop from happening. Uh, in multiple sclerosis, the symptomology actually happens as a result of adverse mechanical tension on the central nervous system. And I say, well, how do I know that? I, well, actually, there's an entire book on it. Uh, Alf Brieg, a neurosurgeon back in the late 70s, early 80s, took a group of MS patients that were dying of MS, and he cut off the backs of their vertebra, pounded, them, pounded the necks into a curve and titanium chicken wired them into that curve, and their MS symptoms went away. Well, what he found was, and in fact, this is a, a picture. <coughs> Let me see, you see this. Here's a picture that has pictures from the study itself. And it shows he what he learned. Here's a normal curve. There it is on the x-ray. There's the spinal cord and the nerve roots. Notice how the spinal cord, the, the fibers of this uh, are slack and lax. It's got folds, bends, and that. It's relaxed. Here's a reversal of the curve. There it is. There it is on the x-ray. There's the spinal cord and the nerve roots. It stretches the cord and the nerve roots, and the nerve roots go down the arm. In the case of the neck, they go in the, in the mid-back, they go around the body uh, in the rib, between the ribs, and in the lower back, they go down to your you know, legs and feet and that. And what he found was, and this is from the study, he cut off the backs of the vertebra here and pounded them into a curve and chicken wired them into, the, into that curve, and it got rid of their symptoms, and he found he didn't get rid of the MS, he got rid of the adverse mechanical tension or the stretch on the cord. We call it a, a functional stenosis. That means, that doesn't mean the hole got smaller, that means the cord got thinner. It's like stretching a, stretching a, a, a rubber band. You stretch a rubber band, it gets thinner. Well, you stretch a spinal cord, it gets thinner. Now, th that's a problem in terms of the firing of the nerves, but also <clears throat> it's a problem that it decreases the blood flow within the spinal cord and brainstem itself. He calls it the pons cord tract. And when you look at the brain, spinal cord extends down here. This is the medulla, this is the pons, and this is the midbrain. And the midbrain is really the floor of the, of the brain itself. It's contiguous with it. So is it actually pulling the midbrain? Yeah, it's pulling the midbrain too. It's just contiguous with the floor of the, floor of the brain. So we're stretching it, we're pulling on it, which by stretching it, we're, we're thinning it out and decreasing its blood flow. Those capillary beds, the capillaries are so small, the red blood cells have to line up single file to get through them and now they're, they struggle to get through and that creates the spasticity. It's like a little mini stroke. Now I didn't say it was a stroke, hear me, okay. I said it acts like it. It's called intermittent claudication. When we restore that blood flow, it, that spasticity lightens up and even, it can even potentially go away. But that's what's creating the, the spasticity. And for the past 17 years, 
what we do here is called Pettibon system. Pettibon system, we're putting the curves back in the neck, mid back, lower back without the chainsaw and the chicken wire. We're doing with molding, with weights, we're, we're doing it by, by with isometric exercises to change the system so that it has that perfect, perfect design that it, it was built to have and to have minimal to no tr stress on the spinal cord. Brieg in his, in his writings actually said it's built, the parenchyma, the parenchyma of the spinal cord and brainstem is built to take stretch, but it's not built to have it all the time. And many, many of these MS patients, Parkinsonian patients, and other neurological patients have these severe head forward postures, which is a constant stretch, constant decrease in blood flow. And you know, I have one patient that, patient that has Parkinson's Plus. We have, he can't open his eyes if he lays down, but if we put, put him on the mold, he can open his eyes. Well, it, it, why is that? Well, opening the eyes is a brainstem activity. He's stretching the brainstem. So we put him on the mold, and all of a sudden, he gets enough blood flow in the brainstem to where he can activate that system again and can function. And so it's pretty, pretty exciting you know, to be able to do that, and, and it, it almost looks like magic. <laughs> so which we're probably going to do a show on the strip here pretty soon here uh, where we call out the, the worst pathologies and take care of them right in, right, right in the in front of the room. So, but the, the MS itself is, a, like I say, an autoimmune disorder. So we want to decrease the inflammation that is happening as a result of the autoimmune. And by decreasing the inflammation, we're stopping the future damage to the brain. Now, one of the worst areas that, that, that uh, MS likes to attack relates to movement of the eyes in, together, and particularly convergence and, and what we call the yoking of the eyes where they do the opposite thing. The only time they do the same thing is when they converge and diverge. Otherwise, they are yoked doing opposites, right? You, you see that in, in uh, the people that you look at. You see their eyes are moving in opposite directions, but they're in concert. The connection between them is called the medial longitudinal funiculus. It is the most myelinated tract within, within your nervous system, and so it likes to hang out there because it's like a serious buffet for MS, right? It's a, it's a, a coating or, or myelin sheath buffet there. Uh, it's kind of like going over here to the Rio, one of the most expensive one, uh, buffets here in town. Well, they like to hang out there, and so you start to lose that, that activity level. Now, here's the thing to understand about any autoimmune. Once you have an autoimmune, you've got autoimmune for your whole body. It's attacking everything. The stuff that's succumbing is what's giving you the symptoms. The weakest stuff, right? The lion doesn't attack the big bull. He attacks the grandpa or the little baby, right? Even though he's a big, tough, strong guy. Well, he didn't want to get hurt. <clears throat> well. The, the, auto, the autoimmune or your immune system is attacking everything, but the stuff that's succumbing is the weak stuff. So my strategy is, number one, s s build up the stuff so that it's not as weak, so that it doesn't succumb, decrease the current inflammation, then go after the autoimmune, which we discussed in autoimmune disorder. We discussed how we do that with botanicals how we work with the Th1, Th2, and Th3 systems, the T regulators and all that, how we do it with, with vitamin D and echinacea and, and, and other botanicals in order to, to restore the immune system to get it to stop killing you. And so that, that's the approaches that we take and we're putting that, that system back together to completely get the, the tension, the adverse mechanical tension on the central nervous system that Alf Brieg talks about. Uh, it's interesting that, that so many have never heard of him, and yet he's a Nobel laureate. And he, he did his work in the late 70s and early 80s, and nobody's using his work except for the chiropractors, and apparently he didn't like chiropractors that much. Uh, so, but uh, anyway, have any more questions about MS? Please ask. We'll do another video on it, and you have a good day. Thanks.